The distinction between qualified and ordinary dividends is very important to U.S. taxpayers. And that's because ordinary dividends are just taxed as ordinary income to you. When you receive them, you just pay tax at your marginal tax rate. But if you receive qualified dividends, you're going to be taxed at lower rates than you would have been if the dividends were considered ordinary dividends. Now, this just applies to individual shareholders. Corporate shareholders have something else. They have a thing called the dividends received deduction, and they get that tax benefit. But I've got a different video on that, so we're not going to talk about that here. We're just going to talk about individuals and how do the dividends that you receive, how are they considered qualified or not qualified? So here are the requirements to be considered a qualified dividend. First of all, the dividends need to be paid by a domestic corporation, uh, in other words, a U.S. corporation, or a qualified foreign corporation. So the question is, what is a qualified foreign corporation? Okay, so it's a foreign corporation that is traded on a U.S. exchange, or if it's not traded on a U.S. exchange, it's located in a country that has a tax treaty with the U.S., or it has an information sharing agreement with the U.S., or it's been approved by the U.S. Treasury Department. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a domestic corporation, but if it's a foreign corporation, it has to meet one of these requirements. Now, if the dividend Dividends paid out, If so let's say you're the shareholder, you're the individual, and you have both a long and a short position in that stock, and then you receive dividends from your long position, you are not going to, the dividends will not be qualified dividends. You're not going to get the lower tax rate. So basically, if you are selling a, a stock short, okay, then any dividends you happen to receive on a long position, you're not, they're, they're just going to be taxed at ordinary, uh, as ordinary income to you. So you're not going to get the benefit of qualified dividends. Now, in addition, you must hold the stock. So whatever stock it is that's paying you the dividends, you need to hold that stock for at least 60 days during a certain 121 day period. Okay, let me show you. I've got a little timeline here. I think it'll make it easy to understand. So we've got the X dividend date here. Okay, so the X dividend date is just the date, like a company will say, oh, during this time period, anyone who holds the shares is going to get a dividend. And when a stock goes X dividend, that means like, okay, if you buy this, if you had the stock on that date, uh, if that was when you acquired it, you know, you're not going to be entitled to a dividend. So you got this X dividend date, which is the date where the stock's no longer going to pay the dividend. Okay, so we got this X dividend date 60 days before. OK, and then 60 days after. So we have 121 days here. If we look at this whole time period, because we have right here, this time period is 60 days. And then this is one day. OK, the ex dividend date itself. And then here's 60 days after. OK, so 60 plus one plus 60 is 121 days during this 121 day period. Okay, you have to hold that stock for at least 60 days during that time period for the, any dividends that you receive from that stock to be considered qualified and get those lower tax rates. Let me give you an example. So let's say you just bought a stock, um, let's say, I don't know, 30 days before. Okay, you, you bought it 30 days before it went X dividend, and then uh, one day later you sold it. So you bought it 30 days before and you sold it 29 days. So you really only held it for one day during this time period. Okay, if you only held the stock for one day during this time period, then it's okay, you failed this test because you didn't hold it for at least 60 days. So you basically can't buy a stock, get a dividend, turn around and immediately sell it. Okay, you need, you need to hold it for a couple of months here uh, during this time period for it to, to be a qualified dividend.